Hey, what's up? Welcome back to this new video. This one is paper 33 of May and June 2021. For A level math, of course. Now, with that being said, let's move on to the questions we have for you today. Now, let's move on to question number one. So, here we have to expand this thing right here in ascending powers of x up to x cubed. So, let's solve this one by one. So, here we know exactly this is going to be a binomial expansion. Now we understand it has to satisfy a few conditions before we can use the formula. The first thing first, this has to be plus 1. So confirm, this is plus 1. And this has to be, power has to be negative or fraction. So we confirm this is good to go as well. So once we satisfy these two equations, we can use your formula to expand this whole thing. For example, we should know, if you had 1 plus x, power n, for example, right, this should give you 1 plus nx, plus n times n minus 1, x squared, divided by 2 factorial, plus n times n minus 1, times n minus 2, x cubed, divided by 3 factorial. So using this formula right here, let's expand this whole thing. So by comparison, you can see this is 1 plus 3x power 2 over 3. x is this, n is this. So x here, by comparison, is 3x and then n is a value of 2 over 3. So replace back in your formula here to expand this whole thing. Now take your time because you don't want to avoid mistakes uh, while doing so. So this whole thing should become 1 plus n is 2 over 3 times x is 3x here plus n is 2 over 3 minus 1 should be minus 1 over 3 minus, uh, sorry, this is x squared should be 3 x squared over the value of 2 factorial. Then plus n is 2 over 3 times minus 1 over 3 times minus 4 over 3 times 3x cubed over the value of 3 factorial. Now simplify and see what happens. So 1 is 1, it will not change. This will become the value of 2x. And of course use your calculator here, so that should be 2 over 3 times minus 1 over 3 times 9 divided by 2 should be minus 1 that should be x squared over here and finally this we have uh, 2 over 3 times the value of minus 1 over 3 times the value of minus 4 over 3 times 27 3 squared is 27 divided by 3 factorial that will be the value of 4, if you were to expand this, that should become 4 over 3. So 4 over 3, x cubed. So this is your answer for question part 1, which is 1 plus 2x minus x squared plus 4 over 3x cubed as required. So just double check your values. Always double check, right? This is 1, 1 is 1. 2 over 3 times 3 is 2. Perfect. How about this one? Let's show them one more time. That should be 2 over 3 times minus 1 over 3, times the value of 9, and then divide by 2, minus 1. Here we have minus 1, x squared. This one should be 2 over 3, times minus 1 over 3, times minus 4 over 3, times uh, 27, divided by 3 factorial, which is 6. That should be 4 over 3. So confirm this is the terms that we have to have for question part 1 for this binomial expansion. Let's move on to question number two, solve this equation, uh, meaning finding the value of x to three decimal place. So first thing first, to help us out, I can let that the value of y is four power x. So you will have y is equal to three plus one over y, because we understand four power minus x is simply one over four power x, which is simply now one over y in this case. Now to remove this base, I can multiply every one by the value of y. Again, the reason is to remove the denominator. That's why I'm doing that. Now I'll become y squared, 3y plus 1. Now send everything to one side, you will have y squared, minus 3y, minus 1 is 0. Now we can solve by, well, using your formula, obviously. Just to make your life easy, always go for the formula directly because you don't want to waste your time too. I mean, sometimes it's very easy, but in this case, you can see it's not possible, right? So y is equal to minus b is 3, plus minus root of b squared, that should be 9, minus 4 times a times c. Root of 13, 
over the value of 2 this is 1 here, 2 times 1 is 2 now we have two possible values, the first one is the value of y is 3 plus root of 13 uh, divided by 2 that should be 3.30278 or y could also be the value of 3 minus root of 13 divided by 2 minus 0 0.30278 now we understand we're not trying to find the value of y, we're trying to find the value of x. So replace this back here, y is the value of 4 power x is 3.30278, that should be minus 0 0.30278. Now you want, you want to bring this power down by applying ln on both sides, right? 3.30278 ln of 4 power x, ln of minus 0 0.30278. Now we understand ln cannot take negative value, so it will not be possible for this one. How about this one? So uh, simplify, you have to bring this down in front right here, that will become x ln of 4 equal to ln of 3.30278. Therefore x is the value of ln of 3.30278 divided by ln of 4. So ln of 3.30278 divided by ln of 4. So x have to be the value of 0 0.862 correct to 3 decimal place. Now as, I, as indication your answer is only one answer so I, that's why also we can use that too to know there's only one answer in the end that should be x equal to 0 0.862 correct to 3 decimal place as required by your question is question number two. Now let's move on to question number three. So here we have these two equations for the curve where t has to be more than the value of minus two. Okay. Next first dy by dx in terms of t simplifying your answer. So let's try this one by one. How would you find dy by dx? Of course by using the chain rule. We understand this is simply dy on top times dx at the bottom. Now they must be connected by something t and t, so that's why we have to have dt and dt over here. So we have to find dy by dt and then dt by dx eventually. So first thing first, this one is a product, so we have to use the product rule. So dy by dt have to be what? This will be the same as it is. Again, it is just a formula we have to know how to use, and this will become minus 2. And then plus this one the way it is times d by dt, this one should be just 1. That should be the value of what? We can factorize, as you can see. This is the same, right? We have, uh, we can take this outside for common factor, that should become exponential, minus 2, that should become, uh, minus 2 times this will become the value of 2, minus 2t, two and then plus 1 over here. That should become this, and eventually 3 minus 2t, for the value of dy by dt. Now we have to find the value of dx by dt first, so here we have this. So dx by dt is what? It is 1 plus 1 over t plus 2 times d by dt of this one, that should be just 1. That will become 1 plus 1 over t plus 2. 1 is 1 over 1, so simplify. That will become t plus 2, plus 1 should be 3, over the value of t plus 2. So I'm trying to make them become the same base, so we can do this, you have this. Now finally, uh, we have to break this back into the main equation, main formula right here, to find dy by dx. So dy by dx finally is what? It is simply the value of dy by dt, which is this one, 3 minus 2t, times dt by dx, but here we have dx by dt, so we have to flip this upside down, this will become t plus 2 here, and then t plus 3 at the bottom, so eventually we have to simplify, you will have simply exponential minus this, 3 minus 2t, t plus 2 over the value of t plus 3. This is your value for dy by dx in part a of your question. Now for part b we have to do what? We have to find the exact y value or y coordinate of the stationary point. Now we should know at the stationary point what happens, dy by dx, have to be 0. Now of course you have to uh, show your work here, but since I have more space here, let me continue here for me. So equate that to 0. 
this whole thing to 0. Cross multiply, something times 0 will be 0, and this will just be the value of exponential 2t. 3 minus 2t, and then t plus 2 have to be 0. Solve for the values of t, this is factorized for you already, so it's good, perfect. So you have exponential minus 2t is 0, or 3 minus 2t is 0, or t plus 2 is 0. Now, this will be minus 2t, ln of 0 is not going to be possible because ln had to be positive value. You can only take positive value, it will not be possible. So here we have the value of t has to be 3 over 2. And this t had to be minus 2. But we do know from the question itself, t had to be more than minus 2, so this is not possible. So eventually t can only be the value of 1.5, which is 3 over 2. Now let's use this to find the value of x, now of y actually. This is required by your question here, the y is this one. So replace back in this formula, let's see what happens. So y will be t minus 1, t is 1.5 minus 1, exponential minus 2 times 1.5. That will become the value of 0 0.5, which is half, times exponential minus 3. So y is 1 over, over 2 exponential power 3. And this is your answer for question part B, for question number 3. Now let's move on to question number 4. So here we have f of x is this thing right here. Now we have to uh, express f of x in partial fraction. So let's try. As you can see, this is linear here. Non-repeat linear, so we understand this have to be equal to a over 1 plus 2x plus b over 4 minus x. Now we can take the base, multiply by this fraction one by one, and this will be the same, it will not change, so 15 minus 6x is equal to, this time this will become a, 4 minus x, plus this time this will become b, 1 plus 2x. Now if you if you uh, are thinking, okay, why this become this? So, so give it a try, right? a over this thing times, 1 plus 2x times 4 minus x. You will see this will cancel out with this, so you will have this times this. That's why it will, it's this. So now we have this equation to use to find the value of a and b, so let's choose something uh, wise. Now you can choose any values of x that you want to, but choose something that will make your life easy. For example, I'll choose x to be the value of 4. That will be 15 minus 24, right? That will be minus 9 is equal to a, that should become 0, plus b, that should become the value of 9. Therefore, b is the value of minus 1. Now, next one, I'll choose something easy, x is the value of 0, that should become 15 over here, that will be a, that should be 4, and that should be minus 1 times 1. Now, that should be 15 is equal to 4a, minus 1, so 4a is the value of 16, therefore, a is the value of 4. Here you go. So finally, we have the value of a and b replaced back in your main thing over here by a partial fraction that should be 4 over 1 plus 2x. b is minus 1 over 4 minus x. Here you go, this is your answer for part a expressed in partial fraction. Now for part b, hence find the exact value of this integral in this form as required. a and b are integers, are whole numbers. So pretty simple, replace it back. Hence means using part 1 as your answer. Now f of x, we have seen it is this, it is also this, so let's use this, right? Integration of this whole thing to 1 f of x is 4 over 1 plus 2x minus 1 over 4 minus x. Now, we can perform this one by one, so 4 is only a multiple, leave this outside. Now, because this is linear, we can apply ln of the value directly, that should become 2x. Then divide by d by dx of this one, that should be the value of 2. Now here we have minus, now this is linear, that should be ln of the value below. Now divide by d by dx on this one, that should be minus 1. Now simplify, before applying the, the brackets and everything else, simplify. That should be 2 ln of 1 plus 2x, plus ln of 4 minus x. Limits will be the value of 2 and 1. Now again, one more time, how do we perform this? Pretty simple, if you know, integration of 1 over x, simply ln of the value below. Integration of the value of 2x plus 1, that should be ln of the value below, 
divided by d by dx of this, that should be 2. So one more example. If you had 4 over 2 plus 1 integration, now 4 is only a multiple, leave this outside, that will become 1 over the value below. Right? So again, ln. My apologies, should be ln. ln uh, over the value below, divided by d by dx should be 2. So one more time, I think I'll confuse you guys here. Let's say I have this, take out 4 outside, doesn't really matter, it's only a multiple. Then we have 1 over this linear value. If it's linear, I can apply ln directly. Take the value below, then divide by d by dx of this, it should be just 2. So same way, we have performed this over here to find these values. Okay, hopefully you guys know how to perform this by now. Now put this back in, you have 2, ln of 1 plus uh, 4 is 5, plus ln of, that should be 2. Now minus, that should be 1 over here, 2 ln of 3, uh, plus ln of 3. Alright, uh, simplify, that should be 2 ln of 25, right? Send this over here as power, plus ln of 2, that should be minus, so 2 plus 1 is 3, so 3 ln of 3. That should be ln of 25 times 2, should be 50, minus ln of 27. Therefore, that should be ln of 50 over 27 as your answer, in terms of integers, right here. Okay, so I think the hardest part is just to know how to integrate these one, one by one. So this is pretty simple one more time. For example, if I have integration of 5 over x minus 1 dx. 5 is only a multiple, leave this outside. Now because this is linear, that should be ln of x minus 1, then divide by d by dx of this, which is just 1. So similarly, let's try one more example. If you have, let's say we have 4 over uh, 1 minus x dx. This is 4, it is only a multiple, leave this outside. Because this is linear, that should be ln of the value directly. And then divide by d by dx of this, that should be the value of minus 1. This is how you would integrate these things. So hopefully this is makes sense right here for this integration. And then eventually plug in the values of 2 and 1, solve one by one. Take your time, of course, then that should be the value of 50 over 27. For where a and b are integers as required. This is your question number 4. The description below and click on this link to access the Patreon page for the full video. With that being said, good luck and thank you for watching.